Yes, everyone, you know what time it is. It's your boys, Jack and Dave here once again, giving our reactions to the creator predictions. We've asked a bunch of uh, fellow Spurs creators around our lovely community to see what they have to say, what their predictions are ahead of this match against Crystal Palace on Friday night. We're going down to South London and we're going to take on those Eagles and we're going to see if we can preserve our position at the very top of the table. Let's keep it healthy. Let's grab three points and let's see what these guys have to say. If you can for us, smash that like button and as well, get your comments in down below on what your favorite of the predictions are and we'll go straight away to see see what the one and only Lee the Dorset Spur has to say. He always has those great sign-offs, so let's see what this man has to say. Bit of early credit for Lee, by the way, an example everyone else has to follow. I didn't even have to text them this week for it. Just sent in with a message, delivered nice and early. So everyone else that what follows, make sure you start doing the same. Hey, Dave. Hey, Jack. And all you Irish Hot Spur subscribers out there, Lee the Dorset Spur here, back with another prediction. After getting it sp uh, spot on <laughs> last week uh, on Monday with a 2-0 hard-fought win um, I'm back to give my views against Crystal Palace I think this one may well be slightly harder I know Crystal Palace ain't having the best of times but this is a potential banana skin and will really show where we are and what we're doing um, I think this is going to be um, a tough game if I'm, if I'm being honest but I still feel that we are on the crest of a wave. The players are really buying into it. The fans are really buying into it. Posta Coglu is saying all the right things. Great first half last weekend. Not so good second half. He let them know it. We all know it. We saw it ourselves, but we got the result. This week, we're going to really have to be up for it and really push it on. So, for me, I think we're going to concede this week, unfortunately. But I still think we're going to come away one, two winners. Up the Spurs. Come on, Lee. Nice prediction there. 2 1. I definitely could see a 2 1 happening. Uh, I said every, to the, all the members uh, that were able to exclusively listen to our thoughts ahead of time. I do feel like this could be a tough, tough game because Roy Hodgson, wise old fox, he likes to set up his teams in that low block. We've been struggling against low blocks so far this season, and I think they might give us one of the hardest low blocks to break down because it's just going to be a lot of guys out there that are just willing to die to win that tackle, willing to die to you know uh, not give us any sort of inches you know inside the the middle thirds or the final thirds, and they're going to make life difficult for us. We could end up you know making pretty easy work of it, but if this were to be a difficult game, I wouldn't be that surprised. I'm kind of in Lee's uh, position here, Dave. Yeah, look, Lee, Lee's a, a wise old guy. You know, he's been around the block uh, following Tottenham uh, all across the UK for years. Um, but look, you know, I think I agree with him. I do think it'll be a tough game. I don't think we're going to concede, though. You know, with Eze, with all this day out, I think, you know, it reduces uh, our, you know, their chances dramatically of scoring. Where we might concede could be a set piece. But, you know, good to see Lee confident, still riding that crest of a wave. And uh, long may it continue. Big up Lee setting the example. Good man. And uh, also, yeah, special shout out for sending in that video without even any prompt or anything. Top, top man, Lee. Everybody do check out his lovely channel. But let's see what uh, I believe our man Marlon from Southview Coys TV has to say. Good man. Let's go. Jack, Dave, how you doing? It's another prediction. I feel like I was only speaking to you the other day about <laughs> Fulham and now we're here for Crystal Palace. Um, predictions, predictions, predictions. So it's Marlon from South Newcoys TV. Um, I'm going to have to go with the law of averages right now. We keep scoring two or more in, in the game, so I'm going to have to predict us to score two. Um, especially with Crystal Palace's injuries as well at the moment. So I'm going to go 3-1. I'm going to go 3-1. Spurs, um, I think Sonny will cut, grab a brace. I think Madison will be involved somewhere. Actually, it might be time for Kulazewski to step up because we've been quite disappointed with his goal contribution. Um, but I think the game will be over by 60 minutes. Um, my big question to you guys, though, is, and this is a question I've been throwing out to people, is do you play Basuma? knowing that he's got a risk of a yellow card they'd be missing for Chelsea? Mm. Or do you go with Hoiberg? Um, even I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the predicament, play your best team, but if Hoiberg has to play against Chelsea, it worries me. So, will Basuma not pick up a yellow mm -hmm. card is the other thing as well. And does that take the aggressive nature that he's been doing in the last mm. couple of games as well out of his game? So, will we not see a full Basuma? But yeah, I'm going to go three one anyway. But yeah, it'd be nice to get your answer on the uh, question about the Suma. Does he play or not? Because uh, that risk of... 
Nice one, Marlon. Nice one, man. And uh, I agree with what he had to say there, actually, that mm. it is a big decision between Hoiberg and Basuma. I agree with him. It's not an easy decision either, right? It's one that you do sort of see the benefits of playing Basuma because he is the best number six that we have to choose from. He's just otherworldly on the ball. I mean, he really could, you know, cause Palace problems. He causes any team problem, let's be honest. That's how good he is. It's just also, though, like when you're thinking about, you know, future fixtures, you know, tougher games maybe afterwards, games where we will need our best 11, you just don't want to risk not having Basuma available. You really don't. It seems like a player that I would do pretty much almost anything to have, you know, in some sort of capacity where we aren't going to risk any suspension. We aren't going to risk any, you know, future games missed. I would be okay with playing Hoiberg once again. I feel like this team is going to be sitting pretty deep anyways, this Crystal Palace side. So it's not like he's going to be pressed all that much on the ball or kind of forced to, you know, make kind of quicker decisions, which sometimes he might struggle with. I think he'll be given a lot of time and space. And we said this last time in the Fulham game, if you give Hoiberg time and space, he can punish you and he can hurt you. He has a good passing range on him. He's got nice little sort of a, you know, a wide range of passes, whether it's a switch of play, whether it's, you know, a ball in behind, a through ball, slip pass, he can do them. He's not the best in the world or any way at it, but he is better than I think people give him credit for and probably better than even Crystal Palace might even give him credit for and he could end up uh, punishing them for it. So me, Marlon, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to say you play Hoiberg again. Maybe bring Basuma on off the bench if you kind of need that extra solidity. Also give Hoiberg a bit of rest. It's probably not a bad idea, you know, to not expend him the whole 90 minutes so that we don't get punished later in the game. But that's my answer too, sir. No, I agree. I think, look, you... you 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 bring in Zinedine Salzburg. I mean, you're trading, you know, the conductor in, in Basuma to the general in Zinedine Salzburg, Jack. So I'm not too worried, you know. Should have enough to get done by Palace. I do agree with Marlon. I'd much rather Basuma versus Chelsea than Hoiberg. I just think Basuma will give us a lot more in that game and we'll need more of the attributes that he brings to the team. So absolutely agree with you, Marlon. What I don't agree with is... We ain't conceding, my man. We're going for our fifth clean sheet of the season. But big up, Marlon. Great video, my man. Good man, Marlon. And uh, let's see what the Perchy TV has to say. Let's go. I, I always like Perchy's videos. So let's see. How's it going, Dave? How's it going, Jack? Hope you both are doing absolutely well. This is the Perchy here from the Perchy TV. <laughs> you want another prediction for this week? This Friday night's game against Crystal Palace. Yes, sir. You didn't even ask for mine against Fulham. I would have gone 2 0 <laughs> and I would have had it all right again. But I'm going exactly the same. Crystal Palace nil, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Two James Madison goals, and one of them is going to be a free kick. Put your money on it, boys. Um, I think it's going to be a tough game because I think it's a, it's a Crystal Palace team that can't score, but they can defend quite well. Mm -hmm. They went on a little bit of a battering the other day against Newcastle. I think we're going to be absolutely fine, and we're going to be sitting there with five points clear at the top of the table. Great news to be a Tottenham fan. Um, excited, can't wait, and let's. It's hopefully we can roll onto the weekend. We roll onto the weekend five points clear at the top of the table. Yes. And guys in the chat watching the show, like and subscribe to these amazing people. Peace out. Great prediction, uh, Perchy. I must say, absolutely love the energy. Also love the call out as well, you know, for not being featured last time because he said, guys, I would have gotten it right, you know, and you should have let me, you know, have my chance. And he's gone 2-0 again. He's doubled down with it. Two Madison goals, a brace from Matters, and one of them being a free kick. I love a specific prediction as well. You know, he said, yeah. put your money on a free kick from Matters. I like it, Perchy. That's one of the good predictions there. I remember Christian Eriksen scored a free kick against Palace years ago, an absolute belter. Could very well be a Madison free kick. But look, I think he's spot on with sort of Madison's involvement. I think he's the key to this game. You know, in years gone by, we found it tough there. But having someone like Madison is the absolute key. So I think he's spot on. And uh, what I will say, Perch, is I shouldn't have to ask right now. You know you're featuring in it. Send it over. Get it over nice and early. Uh -oh. uh, but it's see uh Parchy predicting that we're going to be parching uh parching ourselves at the top of the tree jack or parching yeah. ourselves at the top of the tree nice one Parchy. great prediction my man really i actually thought i love the specificity of it it was uh it was terrific <laughs> my man and uh um yeah look great forward video. to your next one we'll see if you're right this time mr Parchy. and let's uh, head on over to spurs between the lines see what the one and only mia has to say let's go big on mia this is mia from spurs between the lines this is my prediction for crystal palace versus tottenham so Crystal Palace have got two massive players out with Elise and Eze out of their team. 
We also have got a few injuries. However, I think that we have got enough to win. I think the midfield battle is obviously where it's going to be key. We have got Basuma available. Now, personally, I think I would play Basuma. You've got to play your best players every single time. And also, um, if he doesn't learn, he will continue to do this. He has to learn his discipline. Um, and I know a lot of people are saying that we need him for Chelsea. I think that personally, he needs to um, be able to come into these games and not be reckless. Um, mm. Although he does get a yellow card for dissent as well. Um, I think we're going to beat them 3-1. Also, statistically, we do normally get the better of them overall in our games against them. So, I think we're going to win. Come on, you Spurs. Nice one, Mia. I like the, uh, the, you know, the use of just sort of history. I think Marlon kind of did that as well, right? He kind of brought up, you know, that Spurs do score, score, uh, score two goals on average. You know, I like the research ahead of that one. And Mia, I agree that... Um, it could be a, a three goal, you know, sort of a game. I hope that we end up scoring three. But when it comes to Basuma, what I would say is it just feels like a guy that you just don't want limited in any way. You don't want him to be thinking about, oh, you know, I can't really be making a challenge here. Like you just don't want him to be in any sort of cage, you know, whatsoever, or any sort of kind of mindset that he can't, you know, perform at full level. So that's also maybe an extra reason if I was looking for one for why maybe you just give uh, Hoiberg, you know, another sort of mm -hmm. shot because Basuma, you know, he's so it's such a good player. You don't want to you don't want to shackle him in any way. And that that would be the case. Let's be let's be frank. That would be the case if he started on Friday night. He would have to be, you know, told, listen, there are going to be certain challenges that maybe you normally would make as a defensive midfielder, have to maybe shy away from, have to maybe lean on other guys to help you out. You can't be as sort of aggressive as you normally might be and that means then we're getting a less, you know, we're getting a shackled Basuma, and that might not really benefit us in the long run in the game. I think it'll affect him in terms of how he gets on the ball and drives at players, because a lot of the time, you know, he can get physical with them, and that's how he sort of takes some of them out of the game, whereas this time around, can he get that physical with them? I think you take away from the player. I think you're absolutely right, Jack. And also, I don't really mind the yellow card for the centre, because if I remember correctly, I think he was sticking up for Papa Matasar, the young kid in the team, yeah. when he got that card for the centre against Arsenal. So I don't mind that. Um, look, I, I understand the point, you know, that you want to put your best team out there. But if Hoiber, if Basuma is sort of going to be shackled or there's certain things that he can't do which really affect his game, are you going to, is it really your best team then? I would question. But look, you know where I sit, Jack. I've already said I'd like to see Zinedine Sosper. But what I do agree with me is, uh, you know, the scoreline. And um, so big up, Mia. Come on, you Spurs. Nice score prediction, Mia. Great prediction in general. And please head on over to the lovely Spurs between the lines. Yeah. See what Shawnee has to say. Spurs talk show. Let's go. No flat cap on this one. Bit disappointed, Shani. Yes, guys. How you doing? Sean here from the Spurs Talk Show. This is my prediction for Crystal Palace. Uh, it's a Friday night game, four days after the last one. Under the lights at Selhurst Park is never easy. I personally think, though, that this time round, Tottenham are going into it with good form. It looks like all of our injuries, scares that we had, will it won't be a problem. Crystal Palace, on the other hand, have got a, a real problem. I think they're still without 11 first team squad players and from memory I'm pretty sure they were out without Michael Elise, Everett GSA, Tompkins, I think Ferguson and even uh, Dean Henderson is also missing. I think that Crystal Palace just lack a little bit of firepower. Good up the um, bad at the at the top end at the moment but very good at the back. But I just think Tottenham will have too much for them if we play our best football. But I do want to see a an improvement, a 90 minute performance because I was a little bit frustrated with how the performance went against Fulham, even though the, the actual outcome and the result was spectacular. I'm going to go for a Crystal Palace nil, Tottenham Hotspur two, five points clear at the top of the table, and the Spurs go marching on. Shout out to the Irish Hotspur oh. army. Nice one, Shawnee. Thank you, sir. And I, I agree with, you know, that it needs to be a complete performance in order for us to actually get over the line in this one, right? And... I'll be honest, I have a different take on the Fulham game. I didn't think we played nearly as bad as what people kind of thought. I felt like it was, I wouldn't say like a complete performance, but I thought we played for the majority of the game, you know, quite well, quite professionally. It was just really just another case of just us maybe not always taking our chances and just, you know, making life, you know, a tad bit more difficult on ourselves than it really needed to be. But it was mostly in control for the majority of the match. Yes, we kind of sort of let Fulham in behind towards the end of it. But like I sort of said, I think that's just... I don't know, I think because it was pretty much that we 
deserved to already be, you know, well in front that we started maybe, you know, slacking off a little bit because we felt like we had been in control for such a long mm-hmm. period. But do you agree with Sean uh, at any stage that, you know, needs to be maybe more complete performance? Yeah, yeah, we had this discussion. Uh, if you haven't, cheeky plug, check it out, this segment that myself and Shawnee do. Um, yeah, we had this discussion, Jack, and I do agree with him to, uh, to an extent. I think, you know... We need to be more clinical, first of all. Pastor Coglu alluded to that in his press conference, you know, and there was an opportunity for us there to really put Fulham to the sword. We didn't do it. Um, and if, if you want to be title contenders, Jack, a part of that is being rootless, you know, and um, we're, we're not quite doing that at the minute. So if the opportunity arises tonight, I hope we do do it. Um, and, uh, we, we, you know, that we do put them to the test. And I, I, I want another clean sheet as well. There's, I think many people are just waiting on us to absolutely smash someone up, steamroll someone. And then a lot of people will come out and say, hang on, you have to look at Tottenham differently. Keeping clean sheets, got one of the best goalkeepers in the league. Midfield is absolutely purring. And then you look at the forward line, Jack, you know, that's the last piece to really come to the party. Once that clicks, everyone has to consider us. So mm. I do agree with Sean in that regard. And then also the substitute. You know, you're looking at players like, you know, if I was around that setup now and I was waiting that long for my opportunity, like a or, yeah. you know, Brennan Johnson with his injuries and stuff, I, any minute I get, I'd be looking to make an impact. I just thought players maybe didn't want to do that. I think some of the players we left on were maybe saving or conserving a bit of energy for the Palace game, mm. but also the ones that came on, I think got suck, suckered into it. And with Posta Cogley, one thing I know is he wants his suck to come on and have an impact on the game, whether you're losing, drawing, or winning. Mm. And they failed to do that. And I think that's why you've seen some of the quotes come out after the Palace or after the Fulham game and some of the quotes before the Palace game. Mm. Um, so we should be absolutely riled up for this one. But I do agree with Johnny on the second half. It was a bit disappointing in terms of, because we know how good we can be, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely hear that. Thank you, Shawnee, and let's see what uh, the one and only Holly's Hotspurs has to say about this one. Thanks for sending in these predictions, Holly. I do enjoy yours. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Let's go. Hello. Yes, it's me, Holly, from Holly's Hotspurs. I'm here to give my prediction against Palace on Friday night. It's another night fixture. I'm very much looking forward to it. It is away, however, uh, but Palace got absolutely tanked the other week uh, by Newcastle. I must admit, Newcastle are a very good side. Uh, but so are we at the moment. Uh, it'd be great to keep momentum going. It'd be great to get another win. I'm pretty sure in our form and in Palace's form currently with the amount of injuries that they've got as well. I know lots of teams have injuries, uh, but especially Palace at the minute. I think there's no excuses to hopefully go and get three points. I'd, I'd like to see her and say that we're not going to lose. I think we're still going to get all three points. I think I might go for a little bit of a bigger one this time. I think I might go for a 3 nil this week. Uh, I'm really Whoa. pushing the boat out. Uh, so yeah, it'd be great to obviously get that over the line and then it'll put us in good stead to obviously play that fixture when we welcome back well do I say welcome back when Pochettino comes back to town uh, when we play Chelsea in the following fixture but yeah True. loving these night games up the spurts nice one Holly nice one Holly and I, I'm sorry that we keep pressuring you into going for bigger predictions you know it feels kind of you know like we've, we've been a little hard on her at times you know where we're really saying Holly you want to see a big one um, and she's gone for it three nil uh, at Selhurst Park. I would absolutely take that. Anybody would take that. Sounds convincing. And also as well, I mean, we just have spoke about and plenty of others have spoke about, it could be a tough game. This really could. But she sort of brought up, they got smacked by Newcastle United. Maybe there is a chance that we could smack them as well. I believe the word she used was tanked, Jack. I mean, <laughs> right. absolutely choice of word hopefully we can thank them as well jack that'll be absolutely nice holly very chirpy there you know it's coming to the end of the week you see a smile on her face um and good to see her you know getting more confidence behind the team she's pushed the ball out like she said you know three nil um so ho- hopefully we can get that jacko you yeah. know big up holly really look forward to your predictions i enjoy them thank you love a three nil at Salhurst park maybe hill messi can uh, get involved in it uh, uh holly but let's see uh what ben and sam from we are tom tv have to say over there thank you both Thank you, boys, for sending in your predictions as well. The, the gross and twosome are back, Jack. <laughs> Hi guys, Ben and Sim from We Are Tottenham TV to give our predictions for the Palace game Friday night kickoff under the lights at Selhurst Park. Um, in my opinion, um, I'm actually quite confident for this game and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, to be honest, because we've seen when we've got overconfident before, but I am going for a 3-0 win. 
I think Palace have been completely decimated up front with the likes of Eze injured, Elise injured, Zaha's gone now. Um, and with Spurs in firing form and going into it with confidence, I can see uh, quite a convincing win. Yeah, Palace is never easy game at Selhurst Park. I think they've only lost one game so far this season at home, and that was against Arsenal. <coughs> so I don't expect it to be an easy game, but without Olise, without Eze, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to trouble us going forward. They do have Edward and Mateta, two physical presents, but I still think Spurs should be able to shut them out. And I know Palace are strong defensively, but I'm going for Spurs 2-0. All right, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Nice one. Uh, nice one, boys. I, I must say, I, I really enjoyed that prediction. I thought that was a uh, that was spot on. Um, I could see it being a tough one, but I could also see it, you know, being a, an easier affair. Right. There's also that, too, to, to think about. Um, there was one thing that was mentioned, right? How, you know, and he might have listened to our pre-match thoughts ahead of time, maybe, Sim, because he did say, you know, Palace, they struggle to, or they actually do well in not conceding at home, right? You know, they've kept some clean sheets so far, only have a, a lost one game even at home so far. That was in the beginning of the season, Arsenal. So we would be, uh, at least so far, of a rare, you know, couple that have actually taken points away from them at home. Yeah, look, Palace games are always tough, Jack, especially under the lights there. I mean, I've watched Tottenham go there for years on the lights and they've always been tough. We've always struggled to break them down. But I think, you know, this time even more so than before because I think it's going to be, I think they're going to set their stall out and look to take a point from us from the very off. Mm. I don't think they're going to press us. They're not going to leave us much space to play in. And, you know, like Posta Coglu said about a front three, now it's a question whether they're going to step up off his words and come to the party. And I think maybe that's maybe why he mentioned that in the press conference to maybe get them sparked up uh, with a point to prove going into to, in, into the, the game tomorrow so interesting what I do like about the two boys is that they never agree you've got one that's overly <laughs> tough and you've got one that's seeing it as a tough game absolutely love the dynamic big up the weird Tottenham TV boys um, if you don't know get to know get over there and check them out the gruesome twosome for a reason and uh, let's head on <laughs> over to uh, the Tron wrap it up with him come on the Tron give us a good prediction man Hi, this is Dermatron here from THFC Till I Die, home of Tottenham past, present and the exciting future. This is my match day prediction for Crystal Palace versus Tottenham Hotspur on Friday. Look, Palace won win out of the last 15 against Spurs. We're unbeaten on the last three, home and away. So, look, I expect another win on Friday, but we'll have to have a better performance than we did the second half against Fulham on Monday. And Postacoglu was right to give them a bollocking up the arse. He really was. And to give, put them in the mind frame of, right, we're going there. We're going to be five points clear at the end of Friday evening, top of the league then for the rest of the weekend. We have to lay a marker down. We're not a soft touch anymore. We can go away to these places. We proved on Monday, even under pressure, to win that and go back to the top of the league. So I'm going for a 4-0 Tottenham win on, on <laughs> Friday. And I expect a better performance than we got in the second half against Fulham. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Like uh, Tron likes to say, love a good growl that comes with it. And uh, 4-0, I thought Holly gave us a, pre a big prediction. Dermatron has stole the show <laughs> with a 4-0. He wants to stay top of the league. You can tell that guy loves being top of the league. Dermatron does. Um, I love a 4-0, Dave. I mean, I'm not surprised it's Tron that's given us, you know, the 4-0. The if anybody was going to be it, it was going to be him. The guy, you know, can find any reason, you know, for Spurs to be, you know, uh, sticking at the top. What would you say to him? Uh, look, I would say slightly deluded, but there is an opportunity with Pasta Coglu giving them their warnings and maybe a bit of a kick up in the ass in the press conferences that we very well could come out and smack them 4-0. I mean, we we scored four there last time, uh, last time out last season. So, I mean, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. Um, <clears throat> but look, we want to win. That's all that matters. And you're right, he is, he's enjoying being top of the league a bit too much, is what I would say. I mean, look at him. He's put himself in the press conference room like he's uh, the dictator there. Big up the Tron. Absolutely brilliant video yet again, sir. Well done, Mr. Tron, and well done to all the rest of the creators that did send in their predictions uh, this uh, past week. We really do appreciate it. We know it. you have to take a bit of time out of your day and uh, help this uh, video uh, become possible, and so we do appreciate that. And all the rest of you guys who've been watching these back and you know smashing that like button, getting your comments in on these predictions as well, we really do appreciate you. Everybody, we'll be seeing you tomorrow night. Come on, you Spurs and the Big Ange we trust. Yes, Dave? Just one thing. 
a lot of people like you know want to get involved and stuff like that and they're sending over videos but sometimes they're in too late because we like to try and get this recorded as early as we can if you do want to be involved make sure you like i said at the start of the video just doubling them down on it make sure you get it in two days before the game Alrighty, you heard the man. Everybody will leave you there. Come on, you Spurs. In the big Ange we trust. We'll be seeing ya. Everywhere we go.